Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching my new video. As you can tell by the title, it's going to be about birds. And birds are everywhere. And they're actually really cool. Uh, but I did have to do some studying because they're not my expertise. And uh, I figured what a great time, it's spring birds are busy in, uh, where I live, North America, getting ready to breed if they haven't already, um, getting ready to fly back if they're migratory. So, let's see. Let's just show you guys a quick introduction to where they are in the kingdom. Animalia. So, the animal kingdom has different phylums that we've talked about in the past. Chordates are animals with vertebrates and they include class of fish, birds, mammals, amphibians, and reptiles. So, we're focusing on class aves today, the birds. Uh, one cool thing, well I think it's cool, is the evolution of birds. They are actually living relics of dinosaurs. Now this is somewhat controversial. Um, a fossil was found in 1861 of Archaeopteryx lithographica. This is what it looks like. I think he was from the Jurassic or Triassic period. And he was a pteropod dinosaur that showed avian characteristics of feathers, uh, fused clavicle for a wishbone, and there was a lot of debate about it. But further down the road, later they found more fossils in China that showed what scientists believe are dromosaurs a group of pteropod dinosaurs that led to modern birds. They had lunate wrists that turned to wings and fused clavicles that turned to wishbones and other bird-like features. So, pteropods <laughs> were one group of dinosaurs that included T-Rex, and the Velociraptor. And Archaeopteryx lithographica came branched off of the pteropods, as did the other modern birds. And let me see if I can find you a picture of that. And today there are two groups of living birds. And they are Paleognathae and neonathae. Paleo means old jaws, and the neonathae are the new jaws. And the paleo includes ostriches and kiwi, uh, mostly flightless birds, and the new ones include all the other birds. So, the pteropods started to branch off into dinosaurs, I mean, into birds, which were formed in the Jurassic period, and then at the end of the Cretaceous period, there was a mass extinction of dinosaurs and animals. So the birds that made it through became our modern birds today. An important thing to note is that there were f other flying animals that went extinct in um, the end of the Cretaceous, the pterosaurs, pterodactyls. They were not dinosaurs or birds. They were actually reptiles. So flight was kind of independently evolved. And in the birds, flightlessness was independently evolved because the old jaw birds and the paleonathae were flightless. But in the neonathae, there are also flightless birds. This is typical with birds that live on an island 
where there are few predators and they have no need to fly. So I did want to point that out. Now let's see if I can find birds. And I'll show you the branch. Here we go. Okay, so here's the dinosaur. And here's three types, dinosaurs, pteropods, sauropods, and ornithischines. I don't know how to pronounce that, I apologize. I should. So, from the pteropods branch, the modern birds, and here's the Archaeopteryx fossil. Okay, so let's get into modern birds. <clears throat> Characteristics of modern birds that I'd like to share with you guys before I show you pictures and talk about other things. All birds have feathers. It's what distinguishes them from other animals. <clears throat> the evolution of the feather was the single most important event leading to capacity for flight, as was hollow bones metabolic rate, large hearts, and modified forelimbs to wings, high efficiency respiratory system, and birds have been able to occupy almost every available place on earth, from the desert and open fields to forests and high mountains, Antarctica, tropical places, cities, coasts. Birds have been able to make pretty good use of all habitats. And I'm going to talk about some of their physical traits and then I'll show you some examples. So we know that their forelimbs are modified for flying. Their skin is covered with feathers and leg scales. Uh, they have a beak instead of mandibles with no teeth, typically. Um, a single bone in the middle ear. We have more than that. Large cerebellum. A four-chambered heart. Like a They're endothermic, they're warm-blooded. Actually, some scientists believe that the pteropods they evolved from were all, some of them were also warm-blooded. Um, instead of air sacs at the end of their bronchial tubes, they have um, more sacs, and I forget what they're called, but it basically enables them to have air constantly flowing in and out of their body. They have air sacs in other places in their body for very efficient oxygen delivery. They don't have a bladder. They actually um, secrete uric acid, which is semi-solid. Um, if you own a reptile or a bird, you know, it's very similar. The reptile <laughs> to the bird. Uh, they're oviparous. They lay eggs. They have amniotic eggs with much yolk and hard calcareous shells. Embryonic membranes in egg during development. Incubation is external, meaning that incubation occurs once the egg is laid. And <clears throat> sex determination by chromosomes. So now, we can talk about and show you a couple pictures of some of their features. One cool thing is that they have a locking tendon, so when they perch, their muscle and tendon locks down so they don't fall off. They have evolved different types of beaks depending on their diet. 
So this is a worm um, eater, a nut eater, and just a general type of bill, multi-purpose, <laughs> a uh, dip nut, the pelican, I'm sure you've seen that before, paired as a nutcracker, flamingo is a mud slifter, fish spear, and meat tear. Different types of bills. Okay. They can also have different types of feathers. So, this shows the quill, the shaft, the barb. Oh, I think this is down feathers. So, the type of feathers that they have in birth or after they molt, I think. So, um, feathers are made of keratin, like our hair, and they do fall out. And it's strategic. Either it's all at once, like penguins, or it's two at a time to maintain balance for flight birds. So, everything is about maintaining balance and center of gravity. Their heavy legs help them maintain center of gravity also. So, we're going to move on to this other book. Birds digest their food with, they have a crop, which is a sac at the end of their esophagus. And then when that's passed through, it's just like extra. Birds actually eat twice their body weight or more. So eat like a bird. Not really accurate. They have a gizzard, which crushes, grinds, um, hard material that they ingest, rocks, etc. Except owls, if they have something indigestible in their stomach, they'll actually secrete more stomach lining to wrap around and expel that. So, kind of cool. And there's just more pictures of bills and stuff which we've gone over. We can talk about um, breeding. Birds typically breed when there's enough light and warmth for their babies. So in the summer um, in the south, which is our winter or the win or the summer in our north. Some birds mate for life, others mate for a season, and others are uh, mate with lots of other birds. And typically the male displays ornate plumage to attract the female. Um, if you haven't seen The Birds of Paradise in, I want to say it's Planet Earth, it's really hilarious the things that the males do to attract the females. You should definitely watch it. Uh, and sometimes the male sticks around and helps with incubation and feeding the baby, and sometimes they do not. So, uh, they actually combine their gametes, and the uh, mom, the female, pushes out the egg, which can be different um, sizes, shapes, typically white and oval, but depending on the nest, and whether it's camouflaged. Some of them do have pigmentation. And I don't know if there's anything else to say about the eggs. I think I have some pictures to show you. And this. Oh yes, the cuckoo bird can mimic other eggs and lie them in another nest 
and have someone else take care of their <laughs> take care of their eggs, which is pretty funny. Um, we'll go to migration in a minute, but I'm gonna show you different types of nests and eggs. So, because birds inhabit all parts of the earth. They can build their nests with all sorts of items and trees with mud, seaweed, whole ground, or take advantage of holes, whole nests. Some of them can actually build a nest stuck to a wall in a city with a muddy substance. This one looks like it's made with feathers. Um, look at this owl. He's very protective of his eggs. It's really cute. So. In addition to the natural materials used, a be bewildering array of unusual materials has been recorded for nesting, including snake skins, cloth, paper, cigarettes, plastic, cellophane, aluminum foil, and styrofoam. And most birds actually clean the nest out, except for owls, they don't. Their nests are notoriously dirty, but uh, by cleaning it out, it keeps the baby birds, well, better hidden, because there's not a scent. The pigmentation used in the eggs that are different colors is similar to like fruit and vegetable pigmentation. So there are only very few colors like pink, blue, yellow, and brown. But they can be modeled for camouflage. And this shows a chick inside of the nest with a yolk sac. And the albumin, which is white, which is also a type of membrane and etc. Uh, etc. Et and all chicks have something on the top of their uh, beaks to break out of their shells. And we all know that birds migrate. And in a formation as a way to conserve energy. Some birds are solitary until they migrate. Others might migrate solitarily. But it's believed that 50% of migratory birds don't make it. It's very arduous. And the benefits have to outweigh that. So uh, they really do go to greener pastures and it's more beneficial than staying put in freezing or having their offspring freeze. And most tropical birds don't migrate. It's usually North American or Eurasian escaping the winters. And scientists are still trying to learn what off what um them to migrate, whether it's changes in light patterns or weather, but they usually follow the same path every year and use the landmarks to find their way. So. Okay. excuse me, that birds live, and that they can live in pairs, they can live alone, or they can live in um, communities, varying, so they might only live in communities when it's time to breed, which actually a large group of males trying to attract females is a lek, geese do that. A large group of geese will kind of do this weird water dance to attract females. 
all together instead of singularly trying to attract their mates. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about bird song because if you want to be a bird watcher, it's a really good way to identify birds, except that mockingbirds can actually <laughs> mimic other bird songs. So, oh, they're they're feisty too. I had one um, attack my dog <laughs> repeatedly. It was so territorial. And anytime I went, I had to go near the tree when I took my dog to use the bathroom. And it would just dive at my dog, and my dog was petrified. And oh man, he was feisty and loud. So, bird songs can either be a song which is melodic and kind of attracts males or other birds that they want, but a call can be territorial, a warning um, to each other, or yeah, to another bird to get away. So this shows singing birds, mama leading the way, songbirds, Lost birds. They can also use it as a way to stay with their flock, kind of call to each other, and can vary very hugely. Okay, so we are now going to look at the habitat of birds, and I'm going to show you different examples of them. Uh, birds are actually an important ecological indicator of the environment, meaning that changes in their population basically show um, uh, human impact. And one of the biggest problems for birds is habitat loss. Whether they're migrating and their landmark isn't there, or they don't have a place to nest, they won't. Another problem in North America is that songbirds evolved without cats. Cats are an introduced species and from the old world. And songbirds in North America did not develop any kind of um, tools to avoid the cat. And house cats are what, uh, that are let out to roam are responsible for over a billion songbird deaths a year. When I read that, it made me actually really upset. In the city, it's different, but you know, if you live somewhere where there's lots of songbirds, try to keep that in mind. If you do have a cat, they are going to kill a bird if they see it, and some of them are endangered. So please keep that in mind. Birds and waterfowl. They include chickens. This is a curassow. And they live in marshes and other areas, some open fields. Penguins, which live in the near the water, and they can actually fly underwater. Divers live in lakes, loons, seabirds, flamingos, which live in tropical areas, pelicans and their relatives live near shores, shoreboard, shorebirds like the puffin, waders like herons and storks and egrets. Cranes and relatives, 
sitting on a hippo's head. Birds of prey. Owls. Night birds. Mouse birds. Trogons, which are tropical. Kingfishers and relatives. Pigeons and doves, which are really good at living in city landscapes or urban landscapes. Parrots, which are tropical. Cuckoos and relatives. Woodpeckers and relatives, including toucans. Hummingbirds and swifts, perching birds, which include a lot of songbirds, the chickadee, so adorable. Okay, I'm gonna read to you now some bird facts. The largest bird is the ostrich. I'm actually going to whisper these more closely. <laughs> the largest bird is the ostrich. Chicken is the most common species in the world. Kiwis are blind and hunt by smell.
smartest bird was a parakeet with extreme vocabulary skills. An albatross has a wingspan of 14 feet. It can sleep while it flies and only needs to land once every couple years to breed. It can travel hundreds of thousands of miles each flight. A flamingo only eats with its head upside down and gets, it, gets its color from its food. Tiny green algae that turn pink during digestion. 